Hey guys, what is going on? I'm Dale of Dale's Leatherworks. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have a John Lofgren Engineer Boot Extravaganza. And to commemorate this occasion, I brought along my Baker's seven year Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 107 proof, because nothing is more American than bourbon and engineer boots. <laughs> Real quick, up front, all four of these amazing pairs of John Lofgren engineer boots are gonna be on sale on my website, dalesleatherworks.com. These were sent to me by my friend, Jen at Patina Miles. She is a super cool gal, has amazing style. I will leave links to her Instagram and YouTube channel in the description below. She helps me out a ton behind the scenes. So for that reason, I help her out by both selling her boots and sending her the cash, as well as by reviewing the boots, it helps my content. See, it's a yin and yang, it's a quid pro quo, you might call it. <laughs> and I love my quid pro quos. <sighs> Ooh, that's good. So, John Lofgren is no stranger to my channel. I've reviewed some of his boots before. I really love them, they're really high quality. They're American designed, built in Japan. These four models are from a shop called Standard and Strange. These are all in a size 7D, by the way. So be advised of that if you're interested in buying any of these. On the website, they do, they are listed at full price for $1,200, $1,375, $1,450, and $1,300, respectively. I'll be knocking a couple hundred off that uh, to give you guys a good deal. All of these are unworn except for the deer skin. The deer skin were only worn a couple of times and they're in basically new condition. As you can see, we've got some creasage on the vamp there. And this deer skin, it's got a really loose and inconsistent grain anyways. This is a wild animal. It's very soft though, very nice stuff, very hardy, robust stuff. The grain isn't gonna be as consistent in the deer skin as on the other leathers, but that's okay. That's what we love about leather. We love the variety. We love the differences in different types of leather. All right, so let's start by talking about these ones right here. So these are the Wabash Engineer Boots in black chrome XL. Pouring black chrome XL is a classic. It's also no stranger to my channel. I have a ton of boots in black chrome XL. I sell kilties in black chrome XL. I love black chrome XL. It's a classic leather and it really sings in an engineer boot design, in my opinion. I think engineers, I have my own engineers in natural chrome XL, as you can see behind me here, right here. <laughs> yeah, so these are super nice, unworn, completely unworn. I think maybe she tried them on once. We have a very minor marking of a toe track along the vamp there, but it's very hard to see. Probably would become more noticeable with wear, but there is a nice little pinch right here that's probably does feel structured. So let me read a little bit about this. So these originally retail at $1,155. John Lofgren engineer boots have been among our very favorites since we first laid eyes on them. Originally debuted in 2012, a substantial number of our staff have at least one pair with a few folks sitting on a considerable stash of different styles from over the years. Made from start to finish at one of the best boot making factories in Japan, no expense was spared from development to fit to materials. Everything is simply the best without compromise. Every great pair of footwear begins with a good last, and these start from a custom made last designed by John to give a 1950s silhouette to the boot. No toe bump and a nice taper to the toe shape. Wrapped around that last is a black Horween Chrome XL tanned in the USA and not just any Chrome XL, John Lofgren bootmaker select only the best hides from the highest quality grade offered by Horween. Yeah, that's true. Not, not all leathers coming out of tanneries are of the same grade, similar to meats, right? You have A, B, A grade, B grade, uh, all the way down to D grade, which they fed us when I was in the military. <laughs> D grade meat is only suitable for prisoners and US soldiers. Remember that. I even think, I think Taco Bell meat is a step above degrade meat. But anyways, there are different qualities of meat and leather, and it all just depends on the original animal, how it was cared for, how the product was treated during the tanning process, things like that. But I can tell you from getting sides myself, the quality of hides vary so much from side to side. I get some sides of Chrome XL or Double Shot that are just immaculate, 
supple, robust, muscular, hardy. They bounce back real nice. And then other ones are just kind of flat, flappy, drab, loose grain. What I mean by loose grain is stuff like this. Is, you see it just kind of doesn't stand up on its own. Now this is deer skin, so that it gets a pass for that. But with cowhide, you want something like this that's stiff, opulent, stands up on its own, is smooth, consistent throughout the entirety of the body of the boot. In this case, yeah, flawless Chrome XL. Chrome XL lottery right here. That's what they mean, A-grade Chrome XL. Chrome XL cowhide is an extremely sturdy and handsome leather that gets better and better with time. Horween Black Chrome XL is a T-core leather, meaning the dye hasn't fully penetrated the hide, sitting only at the surface above a natural brown core. Over time, that black dye will scuff off and wear down in certain areas, revealing a tan interior that will also darken and patina with wear. As far as leather goes, it's thick and sturdy, starting out noticeably stiff and requiring a few weeks of good wear to really break in. After that, the leather begins to relax considerably, molding to take the shape of the wearer's foot and softening at flex points to move more easily. The rest of the construction details are on par with that fantastic leather, Japanese steel shanks, British Goodyear welting, brass coated steel buckles made in Tokyo, even the labels are made on shuttle looms. All of this goodness is pulled together and turned into boots at one of the best footwear factories in Japan. Choose a half size smaller than your Brannock device size. These are built on the John Lofgren 110 last, Horween Black Chrome Excel, USA made Vibram 705 sole and 700 heel, Goodyear storm welted construction, brass buckles, custom woven labels, 12 and a half inches in height. Choose a half size smaller from your Brannock size, I agree. Choose a half size larger than your Viberg 2030, I agree. Choose the same size as your Red Wing Iron Ranger. Yes, I agree with that. And so yeah, sizing is gonna be consistent with most US boot brands. I agree with the Red Wing analogy, the Red Wing uh, comparison there. Take your Red Wing size, half down, easy. Next up, we have the Engineer Boots in Battleassi Cognac. These are just amazing. I really, really love Battleassi leather. I sell Kilties in this leather, in fact, and uh, this is very similar to my Grant Stones in Saddle Tan Veg. Those are gonna be right here, but this Cognac is a little bit lighter in appearance, a little bit less pigmented, probably the same pigments just in less of a saturation because as you can see they are quite different. Uh, this leather does darken over time because the waxes and your body heat warms it up and sort of saturates the surface a little bit more but they will not darken up that much. So these retail at $13.75 for the upcharge on the Battle So this is sewn up in Battle Assey's famous Cognac Minerva Leather. This is a full grain vegetable tanned cowhide from one of Italy's premier tanneries. The Lofgren team only purchases and accepts the highest quality hides offered by Battle inspecting each one to make sure it meets their rigid criteria. Beyond their striking initial color, the veg tan leather will continue to darken and take on new texture with age and wear. The leather features an aniline finish, patinas quickly with exposure to sunlight, water, oils, and day-to-day -day life. The break-in is similarly quick, taking the shape of your foot with ease and molding into the most comfortable fit. The rest of the specs are mostly the same. 110 last, Battle Cognac Cowhide, Vibram 705 and 700 heel. They're 12 and a half inches in height. Next up, we've got the Engineer Boots in Burnt Burgundy Ezo Deer Skin. I've never seen Ezo Deer Skin in real life before, so I'm very happy to have these in front of me right now. Yeah, the properties of this leather are quite striking. They're both very soft, a lot of grain, a lot of unique grain on each side. The panels are definitely different from, from one another. On this right boot, for example, the leather striations run vertical, whereas on this panel here, the striations run horizontal. Another really cool thing, all four of these pairs of boots have a really cool woodsman heel back there. So beautifully sculpted there. They've all got a Goodyear Stormwelt, 270 degrees, a perfect engineer silhouette. These retail at $1,450. These are in burnt burgundy, Izo deerskin. The leather is a deep red-brown deerskin from Japan. It's harvested from the Izo Shika, 
a wild deer endemic to Japan's northern Hokkaido region. The largest of the Shika subspecies, they live in rugged, snowy areas and they have been hunted for their meat and hides by indigenous Ainu people for centuries. These are wild animals and are not raised for their leather. As such, each hide will have natural scarring, blemishes acquired during the animal's life. For the deerskin engineer boots, the leather has to be doubled up to achieve maximum structure and durability. The inner leather is fully oil tanned while the outer hide has been treated with waxes and burnished following the tanning process. The end result is an impressively, impossibly soft and strong leather with a remarkable amount of character and incredible aging potential. Same specs as the other ones. And yeah, now that they mention that these are doubled up, that makes sense as to why the cost is higher, not to mention the rarity of the animal. So they have to use double the square footage of the hide than they normally would with a cow hide. Now, that said, they're still using about the same amount of leather if you count the thickness. So it's still gonna be the same amount of leather, but they're doubling up the hide, which means the cost has to go up. And that's good because I could tell that the deer hide by itself, a single layer would be a bit too flimsy. Yeah, I'm feeling it now. That that hide would be really good for like women's purses and stuff like that, like nice lightweight. But if you're gonna build an engineer out of this stuff, yeah, you wanna double up and they did a good job. So it's lined, the inside is, is basically lined with the other layer. And both sides look pretty close, but though I can tell that the interior has more oils in it as compared to the outside is more waxed. So that's pretty ingenious if you ask me. And yeah, I do feel a bit of cushion on the instep here. It's not as structured as the other ones. That cushion is gonna be the effect of the doubling up of the layers there. Super cool, soft toe. The vamp is structured, or actually just the toe is structured. The rest of the vamp is not structured very much. Super cool, Ezo deerskin people. And then last, and my personal favorite of the four, the John Lofgren Devil's Causeway Horsehide Engineer Boot. These are striking. The depth of the grain on this leather is unreal. It reminds me of Shinki Hikaku horse butt. What's really interesting to me is on the box, it says dark cherry. Now, I was beside myself with wonder, like, why did they call this dark cherry specifically? And I got to Googling just images of cherry, and sure enough, there are some cherries out there that are like this color, like this uh, sort of walnut color. <laughs> I thought I was going nuts. I'm like, I don't see a hint of red in this or burgundy at all. And then uh, come to find out, yeah, they probably named it after another type of cherry. The grain texture of Shinky Dark Cherry Horsehide is highly variable and will differ immensely from boot to boot. We cannot ensure your boots will have more or less grain than what is photographed as all pairs will be entirely unique. They can't guarantee the grain consistency, but I guess also maybe they can't guarantee that these are gonna be colored like cherries because they're not. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely more of a, what I would call a whiskey color. It's a little lighter than that. Though, you know, like to compare the Cognac Badalassi to the dark cherry. Yeah, so this is a Shinky horsehide, tanned in Japan. So I did get that much right. Shinky's horsehide is pretty unmistakable. And yeah, this is an absolute grail pair of engineers. Anything in Shinky is really nice. Um, but yeah, to compare these two, for example, this is cognac and this is dark cherry. You know, cognac's a good word for this. I could also use cognac to describe these two, I'd say. So, or maybe we could call this more of a bourbon. What do you think? Yeah, bourbon. <laughs> the upper is a Shinky horsehide tanned in Japan in a color they call dark cherry. We picked it because it brings out all the character inherent in horsehide, scars, marks, grain variation, and other features that would normally be hidden in the tanning process. Because of this, every single pair will be different and wear in differently. If you're looking for a smooth, consistent finish to your boots, these are not the right choice for you. And yeah, all the same details as the other engineers, but yes, what I just really love about these is, you know, the depth. Like I said earlier, you can sort of peer into this leather and see different almost dimensions going on with it. Also characteristic to Shinky is the, sometimes you get a good honeycombing pattern in the leather. And I see a good amount of honeycombing on this right boot, on the shaft, on the inner shaft. There's some really beautiful honeycombing. But yeah, lots of really beautiful sort of uh, cracks. And then not to mention there's like really cool highs and lows, dark areas, light areas. And of course, as the leather breaks in, as you break 
in the vamp area. That'll lighten up and crease up really nice. It's also fully lined with a really nice, seems like a goat skin. This one of the four is probably the most stiff as well. So if you're looking for something really robust, this would be the pick. Yes, completely unworn. Look at that sole. I do see a toe track. I mean, it, you have to hold it in just the right light, but the toe track is there. It's very subtle. And for those of you that are noobs to engineer boots, uh, I guess the toe track is something that sort of comes with the heritage of engineer boots. It's just a line that basically extends from the toe and goes up the shaft. And what else is really beautiful about these is they're all built with a bit of a slant at the top of the shaft here. They both slant down, downward towards the inner ankle. So pretty, pretty cool. They don't have pull tabs, so you might want to get a boot jack if initially to help you get in and out of them. I use my boot jack for my engineer boots. The fit is perfect, but I still need a boot jack just because I don't want to jack up my back. <laughs> All right, so what else can I say about these? I'm in love. I think these are wonderful. Also, I recently started geeking out. I went to this uh, store recently that sells like nautical trinkets. I got this cool like looking glass and uh, some cool nautical compasses and stuff. I just ordered a bunch of new trinkets too. Etsy sells a lot of cool stuff like this. So I might be doing a review on some stuff like this because I am a history nerd. For example, I ordered a sextant today, which is what they used to use on ships. I'm really big on like rudimentary, but very well-made old trinkets like this. And so, and so anyways, I'm a nerd. I'm a history nerd. I like to stay curious and you should too. Stay curious because there's always better stuff out there, better boots to explore, better leathers, better builds. And uh, this is just an example of that. So once again, huge thanks to my friend Jen at Patina Miles for sending me these boots, all size 7D, available on my website. I will be, once again, knocking the price down just a little bit to help move them along to good homes and sending the proceeds along to Jen. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let's keep the love of engineer boots alive. I will see you all in my next video.